Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first, let me uh, thank Books and Books for this terrific opportunity. Uh, this is my last book signing of 2013, uh, and it has been a, a tremendous experience. I have been to uh, uh, Santa Monica, California, Paramus, New Jersey, Atlantic City, New Jersey, three different boroughs of New York City, Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. Uh, I have been to uh, Dallas on November 22nd, 2013. Uh, had a book signing there on the 50th anniversary of the uh, assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy then on to Lyndon Johnson's hometown of Austin. Uh, I stayed in the Driscoll Hotel in the very room where Johnson had trysts with his mistress, uh, uh, and uh, I was uh, roundly ignored by the, most of the Texas media. Uh, the book has become a New York Times bestseller. It is an Amazon bestseller. Uh, it is a, US Today, a USA Today bestseller, uh, and uh, I'm gratified about that. I have uh, approached this subject as one would approach a murder investigation. Indeed, the murder investigation that should have been conducted in Dallas in 1963 and never was. Uh, and I have come to the conclusion, uh, based on an enormous amount of research by those who have done, who have gone before me, uh, that Lyndon Johnson was the linchpin of a, of a plot that involved numerous others. Uh, and uh, there uh, is, I think, a substantial uh, research now. Thousands of books have been written making a very strong case for the involvement of the Central Intelligence Agency, for the involvement of organized crime, for the, organi for the involvement of Big Texas Oil. And indeed, I make the case that Lyndon Baines Johnson had a unique relationship with each one of them. Now, um, let's talk about motive. First of all, it's important to remember that in 1960, Lyndon Baines Johnson blackmailed his way onto the, Johnson, uh, onto the Kennedy ticket. In fact, we know that, uh, that uh, uh, President John F. Kennedy, or in that, po in that point, candidate John F. Kennedy, Senator John F. Kennedy, had selected Senator Stuart Symington of Missouri to be his running mate. Uh, he had asked Symington, Symington had accepted and was writing his acceptance speech. Uh, and that night, Lyndon Baines Johnson and uh, House Speaker Sam Rayburn showed up in Jack Kennedy's hotel room in Los Angeles late at night, and they had with them a, a file, a dossier, on John Kennedy's sex life. Uh, this had been supplied to them by J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover was a next door neighbor of Lyndon Johnson's. He was a close political ally of Lyndon Johnson. Between 1951 and 1961, the FBI budget had tripled due to the good uh, actions of, President, of Senate Majority Leader Lyndon Johnson. When Lyndon Johnson stole his election in 1948, uh, by a totally disputed and fraudulent 86 votes, J. Edgar Hoover flew down for the victory party at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin. So they were very close, and of course Hoover had his own uh, motive. He knew he was facing mandatory retirement. He knew the Kennedys would put him out to pasture in 1964. So uh, his motive was clear. In any event, Johnson's message for Kennedy was, you need me, you need Texas, and if you won't put me on the ticket, I'll just take this dossier and I'll give it to Dick Nixon. Now remember, Nixon and Kennedy were locked in a skin-tight race for, uh, for president. So Kennedy demurs and he puts Lyndon Johnson on the ticket. The next morning, a reporter, in shock, asks the Senate Majority Leader, how could you give up one of the most powerful jobs in Washington, U.S. Senate Majority Leader, to be vice president, a job that has no power at all? And Lyndon Johnson says, you know, I checked in one in four vice presidents have become president of the United States upon the death of the president, and frankly, I'm a gambling man and I like the odds. Maybe this is why Bobby Baker, who was the secretary of the U.S. Senate, described by Lyndon Johnson as my right-hand man, quote unquote, says at the 1961 inaugural of Jack Kennedy, John F. Kennedy will not live out his term and he will die a violent death. This is three years before the assassination. Uh, Johnson is marginalized by the Kennedys. He is uh, cut out of the decision-making process. He goes from being one of the most powerful men uh, in Washington to being the least powerful. He is sent out on the road for funerals and, and uh, ceremonial meetings with foreign presidents that have no significance. Um, he is cut out of the loop, as they would say. But more importantly, in 1963, as the 1964 election approaches, Lyndon Johnson is in desperate trouble. 
He is jammed up in two enormous uh, uh, scandals of the time, the Bobby Baker scandal. Bobby Baker was, as I said previously, the Secretary of the U.S. Senate. He is Johnson's bag man. He has collected millions of dollars in illegal bribes on behalf of Lyndon Johnson. He and Johnson are partners in numerous illegal enterprises. Uh, and the U.S. Senate has opened investigative hearings into Bobby Baker on November 22nd, 1963, the very day of the assassination. Lyndon Johnson's neck is on the line. He also knows that he's under investigation by the U.S. Justice Department in the matter of Billy Sol Estes. Sol Estes is a flamboyant Texas Wheeler dealer. He and uh, Johnson have looted multi-millions of dollars from federal agricultural contracts that Johnson has delivered. Robert Kennedy has a full investigation. More importantly, Robert Kennedy, who wants Johnson off the 64 ticket, has leaked this information to Time Life. And Life magazine has nine investigative reporters on the ground, a veritable hit team digging into Johnson's background for a December 1st expose issue, an issue that will bring Lyndon Johnson, federal prosecution, and prison. So it's not just being dumped from the 64 ticket, although President Jack Kennedy tells his secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, according to her memoirs, on the eve of leaving for Dallas, he says, Johnson will be off the 64 ticket, quote, I don't know who it will be, but it will not be Lyndon. He goes on to say that he is considering North Carolina Governor Terry Sanford, uh, a, a moderate, a racial, a southern racial moderate. So Johnson is a man staring into the abyss. He can either become president of the United States or he can go to the federal penitentiary. And there, therein lies his motive. Now, finding co-plotters is not all that difficult. Lyndon Johnson is the appropriator for the CIA. Lyndon Johnson sits on the secret subcommittee that passes the black box budgets, which are hidden in our aerospace budgets. The CIA cannot function without the hundreds of millions of dollars being, de being delivered by the appropriator for the military industrial complex, Lyndon Baines Johnson. No defense contract in, in uh, Washington moves without a bribe for Lyndon Johnson. So Johnson is, uh, is uh, the godfather of the CIA. He sits on the Senate committee that forms the CIA. When he leaves the Senate to become vice president, he helps install Senator Harry F. Byrd, a close Johnson ally in the congressional oversight that oversees the programs of the CIA. And then there's organized crime. Their motive? They gave $1 million to John Kennedy. They stole votes for John Kennedy. They intimidated voters for him in Chicago and in West Virginia. And in, and in Texas, and in other states. And in return, Ambassador Joseph Kennedy, John Kennedy's father, who was a gangster himself, who was a partner of Frank Costello, the notorious New York mobster, uh, 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 essentially importing scotch by boat into Cape Cod, trucking it down to New York and sell it, which I think is called uh, bootlegging. Uh, he promises the mob boys for a $1 million contribution and a little help on election day, that the, uh, the two gangsters, Santo Traficante Jr., who runs the mob right here in Florida, and Carlos Marcello, who runs the mob in Texas and Louisiana, will not be deported. There are slow-moving deportation processes that have begun under Eisenhower uh, that, uh, they, that the mobsters are very concerned about. Well, you know the story. Robert Kennedy becomes the Attorney General. He double-crosses the mob. He puts wiretaps on Marcelo and Traficante. He harasses them. He actually kidnaps Carlos Ma uh, uh, Marcelo, the notorious gangster, flies him to Guatemala, where he has a, a, a phony passport, and dumps him in the jungle, wearing nothing but his Brioni sh uh, suit and his Gucci shoes. Needless to say, Marcelo is not happy. Indeed, government wiretaps under, under covered, uncovered by the House Select Committee on Assassinations, pick up both Traficante and Marcello talking about the fact that Kennedy would be killed prior to his murder and taking credit in the case of Santo Traficante after his murder. Linda Johnson's relationship with the mob? Why, Carlos Marcello is one of his biggest financial supporters. Lyndon Johnson takes a $55,000 a year bribe from the mob to protect their illegal gambling operations from the U.S. attorneys in Houston and Dallas and San Antonio. Indeed, within 24 hours of Johnson becoming president, the wiretaps put on organized crime by Attorney General Robert Kennedy are terminated by order of the President of the United States. 
And then there's big